Hi guys, welcome to my channel. In this video, I'll be covering what are triggers, what is job chaining and build pipelines, what are build servers and infrastructure as a code, and also I'll explain building by dependency order. I'll explain these four topics in detail. Guys, I have uploaded complete DevOps subject tutorials. I will provide that link in description. You can watch from there. If you are watching this video for the first time, don't forget to like, share, and subscribe to my channel. Let's get started. It first I will explain. What are triggers? Guys, trigger is like a start button that begins an action automatically based on certain conditions or events. For example, I clicked on mouse, so some action will take place. I clicked the enter button on my keyboard, so some action will take place. So clicking on mouse, clicking on keyboard, all these are examples of triggers. At first, I will explain what are scheduled builds. Guys, whenever you develop any code, at first we need to compile that code and then we need to test that code. After testing is successful, then one artifact will be generated. So compiling code, testing code, and as well as generating artifact. All this comes under build process. Guys, for example, let us say, every day at morning 6 o'clock, I need to perform build process on my server. This is example of scheduled builds. You can set a timer to run builds at specific time, like every hour, every day. This ensures builds happen regularly. Next one is polling for changes. Guys, whenever any developer write code, at first, he will place that code in Git software. From Git, he will place that code in GitHub. So, whenever developer plays code in GitHub, automatically Jenkins server will start build process. For example, another developer modified code in GitHub. So, whenever any developer modify code in GitHub, automatically Jenkins server will start build process. So, Jenkins can check your code repository like Git for updates. If changes are found, then Jenkins will start build process automatically. So, only latest code will be in server. And third one is nightly builds. Guys, normally for some kind of projects, if you start build process at morning, it will take lot of time to complete that build process. So, in order to save your time, you can start build process at night time, so that it will save your time. So, night builds are scheduled builds that runs at night, usually when no one is actively working. These night builds take lot of time, so employees can check it in next working day. And fourth one is, Upstream and downstream builds. Guess normally in Jenkins server, we will perform different kinds of jobs one after another. For example, let us say, total I want to perform four jobs on my Jenkins server. First job is to check code. Next job is to build code. Next job is to test code. And next job is to deploy code. So one job is connected to another job. Whenever one job is successful, then automatically Jenkins server will start next job. For example, I am unable to complete job two. So, whenever any job is unsuccessful, then it will not go to next jobs. When one job finishes successfully, it can trigger to another job. For example, job 1 is completed successfully. Then we call this job 1 as upstream. Now, it will perform second job. So, we call this second job as downstream. So, in Jenkins, by using triggers, we can automate build process. So, that by using triggers, your software is built and tested successfully. Next topic is job changing and build pipelines. Guys, in Jenkins, job chaining is nothing but connecting jobs. So that whenever one job finishes successfully, then automatically it will start next job. So, one job depends on another job. Like job 2 depends on job 1, job 3 depends on job 2. Similarly, job 4 depends on job 3. For example, I am unable to complete job 2. So, if job 2 is unsuccessful, then it will not go to job 3. I completed job 1. So, we call this job 1 as upstream. Now, it will go to job 2. So, we call this job 2 as downstream. The first job in the sequence is called upstream build and next one is called downstream build. Guys, by using job chaining, we can complete multiple tasks. And there is also complex job chaining. We call this complex job chaining as pipelines. In Jenkins server, there is one plugin called workflow. By using this workflow plugin, we can create advanced pipelines. And we can create these pipelines by using scripting language called Groovy. And by using these pipelines, you can see each and every step clearly. And by seeing each and every step clearly, you can clearly understand how work is going on. Guess whenever any developer create project, he will place that project in GitHub. Along with this project, he will create one Jenkins file. And this Jenkins file is written by using Groovy script. I written script. The script contains total four stages. One is build stage. Next one is test stage. And third stage is downloading artifact. And stage four is placing that artifact in server. So, I created Jenkins file in order to perform these four stages and this code is written by using Groovy script. Now, what I will do is, 
I will connect this GitHub with Jenkins server. So immediately whenever I place project, automatically Jenkins will perform these four operations. And clearly you can see each stage, whether it is successful or not. For example, let us say testing is unsuccessful, then automatically it will stop here. So job chaining is nothing but connecting multiple jobs. So only if one job is successful, then it will go to next job. So if all stages are successful, then my build process is successful. Next I will explain what are build servers and infrastructure as a code. Guys in DevOps, even if you want to configure your server and if you want to manage your server, even for that operations you need to write code. So in order to create softwares you need to write code. And similarly in order to manage and configure your servers you need to write code. So when we talk about DevOps, you can manage our servers and setups using code. Same like writing code to create software. Guys, there are some problems with Jenkins server. And that first one is Jenkins interface. Guys, if you want to perform any operation in Jenkins server, you can perform operations in two ways. First one is by writing script or else you can also use web interfaces in order to perform operations. There is one advantage of using web interface that is there is no need of having any programming knowledge. But this web interface will not provide complete features. If you want to use Jenkins server perfectly, if you want to utilize all features of Jenkins server, then definitely you must have coding knowledge. Jenkins uses code files to set up tasks. But most people use Jenkins web interface to make changes. One good side of using web interface is there is no need of having any programming knowledge. And one bad side is if you use web interface, you cannot utilize complete features of Jenkins server. Guys, for example, let us say I written code in order to set up my server for a particular project. So next time when you are developing another project, you can utilize code which is written before. But if you use web interface, you cannot perform code reusability. You need to perform each and every step again. So this is one of the main drawback of Jenkins server. Instead of using Jenkins, you can also use GitLab. Even by using GitLab, you can perform build process. Whereas in Jenkins, you need to write complete code. But whereas in GitLab, there is no need of writing code. Already some predefined code files are present in GitLab. Directly you can use that code files in order to perform build operation. So if you don't want to use all features of Jenkins, then directly you can use GitLab. GitLab is very simple and friendly to use. And last topic is building by dependency order. When building software, some parts need to be built before other parts because they depends on each other. And you can do it by using various building tools. I'll give an example. Let us say total there are three files. One is file A, next one is file B and next one is file C. For example, let us say this file A depends on file B and file C. So at that time, at first you need to build this B and C. So only after building file B and file C, you need to go to file A. Because this A depends on B and C. At first you need to compile file B and next you need to compile file C. And by using make tool, you can set this order. You can set order like which file need to be built first. For example, by using make tool, I will set order like at first I need to build file B. Next file C. After building file B and file C, I need to build file A. And even by using tools like Maven and Gradle, you can set build order. Maven uses one build graph. That graph name is reactor. By using this reactor, Maven will manage order. And even Gradle also use build graph in order to set up order. Even in Jenkins server, you can install reactor plugin. And the Jenkins server will show build order for Maven projects. For example, let us say your project contains two parts of code. For example, let us say one is part A and next one is part B. So at first you need to compile part A and next you need to compile part B. After compiling part A and part B, you need to combine these both codes and again you need to perform testing on that code. After testing is successful, artifact will be generated. So directly you can place this artifact in server.